Hi, I've been engaged in a project over the last few years uh, in collaboration with folks at the Jazz School uh, here at the New School. Uh, and I want to tell you about a study that came out recently, our first uh, case study, where we brought in two live performing, uh, regular performing jazz musicians here in New York City to carry out three improvisations on a standard, but playing on either side of a visual barrier and without being able to talk with each other, so it was just the music. Immediately after they played, we whisked them off separately to ask them about what had their characterization of what had just happened, what worked and what didn't. What was particularly interesting? What was particularly difficult? We also had them listen to the recordings and moment by moment, at every moment, say, here's what I think was happening. Here is where I expected my partner to come in and they didn't, that sort of thing. We then, over the next two months, we also got an outside listener, an expert, to make a number of statements about exactly the same recordings. We then anonymized all the statements so you couldn't tell who had made them, and two months later, we had the same players listen again to the recordings and now rate the extent to which they endorsed any of those 150 to 200 statements that we had taken out. And the pattern of results was clear and surprising. First, they endorsed most of what they themselves had said two months before, not too surprisingly. They endorsed almost as much of what the outside listener had said. They endorsed about 40% of what their partner had said two months before. Uh, the fact that they collaborated as well as they did and improvised as well as they did and yet did not uh, agree with each other so much. They had some serious disagreements about quality and about um, uh, what had really worked and what hadn't. And the fact that they endorsed an outside listener's interpretations more than their partners, quite contrary to their intuition, suggests that improvising well does not necessarily require real shared understanding on every front with your partner. Uh, we have now um, taken those audio clips, which are, by the way, available online. There's a Frontiers in Psychology piece that has all the audio available that you can get. Um, uh, we have played them for 239 listeners uh, in, who have spent over an hour listening and rating statements that the players had most agreed upon and most disagreed upon. Uh, uh, without, we didn't tell the listeners that this was the case. Um, and out of 239 listeners, there is only one whose ratings of endorsement match the pianists more than chance, and only 15 out of 239 whose ratings match the sax players more than chance. Uh, it, so there's clusters of listening that group together and ratings that group together within the listeners, but the audience members or the listeners, the solo listeners, uh, understanding of what happened does not seem to overlap so much with what the player's understanding was. So we're going down a further road of, uh, we now have free jazz improv data. We also are collecting this coming Tuesday, chamber music duos, uh, pianists and cellists. Uh, we're expanding to different uh, genres and more kinds of listening, but the larger project of, uh, of trying to figure out the extent to which people who are doing things together, whether it's music or anything else, are interpreting what's happening the same way as each other uh, will continue. Thanks.